And then 2020 happens and the world changes for everyone, business changes for everyone. And not only at that point during the podcast, was it challenging for myself and Courtney who were navigating being business owners and agency owners, having all of these challenges, but we were getting so many messages from our listeners and followers hearing things like, I lost my job during the pandemic. I want to start a business. Can you help us? Or I need to pivot my business. Can you help us? And Courtney and I, you know, started thinking, you know, we always knew we wanted to do more with Entrepreneurista, but we were. Welcome back to Fearless Narrative, a show that's all about the incredible stories of women who are changing the game, breaking the rules, and pushing through the boundaries to face their fears head on because they are fearless entrepreneurs and creatives, and we love to see it. I am your host, Courtland Jones, and on our show, we go into a deep dive into captivating storytelling and engaging conversations with these incredible women as they share how they are pursuing their passions and shattering glass ceilings along the way. We love that so much. It's so inspiring and so empowering to share these stories with you. And hopefully it will empower you to embrace your own fearless path. Our show is all about feeling the fear and doing it anyway, as well as women supporting women. We love that we need more of that always. So before we get started, don't forget to hit the button to subscribe to our show. We also would love a nice five-star review at the end. (laughs) Without further ado, let's go into a new episode right now. Enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome back to Fearless Narratives. I am your host, Cortland Jones. And joining us today, we have the wonderful Courtney Spritzer and Stephanie Carton, the dynamic co-founders of Socialfly and the driving force behind the Entrepreneurial League. In our conversation, we'll delve into the roots of their entrepreneurial journey, the challenges they've overcome, and the inspiration behind Tharps and Stilettos, their newest podcast, amplifying the stories of women entrepreneurs. Hi guys, how are you? Hi Cortland, we're so excited to chat with you today. Yes, thanks for having us. My pleasure. I'm excited. So I am dying to know your origin story. Who were you prior to being entrepreneurs and how did you meet? And also, can you share the moments that compelled you to take the entrepreneurial leap and work together to create Social Fly? Of course. So I always say I was a born entrepreneurista from the time I was a young child. I was always, you know, figuring out how to turn something that was like trending into a business. I sold Beanie Babies and Girl Scout cookies and Pogs, like all the things. So I feel like I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. Courtney, how about you? What were you doing when you were a kid? So yes, when I was growing up, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs and I didn't necessarily think that I wanted a career in entrepreneurship or wanted to start my own company one day. It really wasn't until I started working in corporate America a few years um, after graduating from college that I realized that I wanted something different. Uh, So when Stephanie and I decided to start Social Fly together, it was, you know, really... um, almost like destiny or or fate. We met through a mutual friend who was also an entrepreneur who happened to be one of my best friends. And she started her company while she was in college. So she also opened up my eyes to entrepreneurship and starting a business being really, really young. Uh, And then I met Stephanie a few years or a year after I graduated. We quickly bonded over our love of social media. And then after three years in corporate America, I shared with her, I really want to career in social media. And Stephanie was like, well, why don't we just start something together? So we worked nights and weekends to really try to see if this could be a real business. And then one day we decided it was way too much uh, to be juggling a full-time job and a side hustle. So we thoughtfully planned our exit from corporate America and Thankfully, everything worked out, but uh, me being the finance person and having the finance background, uh, it was definitely very much a calculated risk. We calculated the bare minimum we needed to make to be able to pay our bills in New York City. And being a young person, we didn't have such high bills. Now, if we started a business, I think our our expenses are are higher. So there's <laughs> definitely uh, it's def- there's definitely a benefit to starting a business young, for sure. <laughs> I love that answer. Okay, so I want to know more about what your company, your first company, I guess, uh, does. So can you tell us more about what is 
Social Fly. Yes. So Stephanie and I started Social Fly uh, really as a side hustle in 2011. And then we quit our jobs on May 4th, 2012, which is a very important day. We always do big things on May 4th, even launched uh, what is now the Entrepreneurista League on, on May 4th. So that's a day that's very important to us and a day that we always celebrate. Uh, in terms of what the company does, so when we first started, our goal was to help business owners with their social media. And then as you know, social media has expanded so rapidly over the past 12 years. So as social has evolved, we've evolved with it. So now we're more of a digital agency offering services in social strategy, influencer marketing, content production, and full media buying. We can essentially buy media across any, every platform. And Looking back on the journey, we've worked with hundreds of clients, household names, and had tons of pinch me moments uh, mm -hmm. throughout the past 12 years. I love that. So there's been really impressive growth and accolades for your company so far. So for example, being named in Inc. 5000. So can you recall a moment that made you realize the impact your agency was having on brands and the industry? Yeah. So looking back, I mean, there's so many moments that I could look back to and think, oh my gosh, this is so special. Uh, but uh, two that come to mind are, um, you know, being on the Inc. 5000 list, that was such an incredible opportunity. Launching Il Maquillage, which is a well-known beauty brand in the United States, uh, getting to work on that campaign was really exciting. Everything was moving so fast. We were doing so much for them. All of our, our entire team was really excited. There were billboards all across New York City. Uh, and even, and now, you know, now that we've been operating and been in business for three years post COVID, which is a really challenging time for any business owner. Uh, I'm really proud that we are still in business because that is not easy. And I'm really proud of the team that we have. We actually employ a lot of moms. So uh, we are uh, basically helping families, which is, is uh, really rewarding. Okay, so as co-founder of the Entrepreneurial League, which I love being part of, I joined, I think, probably at the beginning of when it launched. So I'm really excited to be a part of this community. You've created a thriving community for female founders and leaders. Can you share a defining moment that inspired you to provide support and resources at scale through your podcast and community? Of course. So, Cortland, I'll share the backstory of how the Entrepreneurs League and really Entrepreneurista the brand actually came to be. So as Courtney and I started to experience, you know, really quick growth and success with social fly, so many women founders and, um, you know, women who wanted to start businesses started reaching out to us all of the time. You would get emails and DMS wanting to go out to coffee and pick our brain and just wanting to hear how we were able to do it. And Courtney and I are the type of people that like to help absolutely everyone, but we realized very quickly it was physically impossible and not scalable to go out to coffee with everyone in New York City who was reaching out to us and still run our core business, which at the time was only social fly. So we started thinking, you know, how can we help as many women founders as possible and really do it at scale? So what Entrepreneurista initially was and our idea was, okay, we'll start a podcast and we'll share all of these great stories. So now when someone reaches out to us and says, you know, I want to start a fashion brand, we can say, oh, go listen to this episode of the Entrepreneurista podcast with Michelle Cordero Grant, who founded Lively and hear how, you know, she was able to grow and scale and ultimately sell her business because we couldn't give that advice. That wasn't our experience growing a fashion brand. So we launched our podcast and it was actually five years ago this past week that we celebrated the release of our first episode. And, you know, that our the podcast Entrepreneurista really took off from that first episode. And from there, really the first, you know, year, year and a half of the podcast, um, that's really what Entrepreneurista was. We released a new episode every week. We were organically growing our email list and our social community. And then 2020 happens and the world changes for everyone, business changes for everyone. And not only at that point during the podcast, was it challenging for myself and Courtney who were navigating being business owners and agency owners, having all of these challenges, but we were getting so many messages from our listeners and followers hearing things like, I lost my job during the pandemic. I want to start a business. Can you help us? Or I need to pivot my business. Can you help us? And 
Courtney and I, you know, started thinking, you know, we always knew we wanted to do more with Entrepreneurista, but we were so focused on growing our agency business. And now here we are in the middle of this pandemic when women business owners and women in general just need more support than ever. We knew it was the time to really focus on building Entrepreneurista to be now what we've done over the past three years. So Courtney and I, worked on a plan together to really divide and conquer, which is what we've always done best in business, where we decided, okay, it, by the middle end of 2020, Courtney would focus on growing and scaling Socialfly, and I would primarily focus on building everything out and growing Entrepreneurista. And of course, we still come together, as you see us here now, every day uh, to to work together, but we had our you know direct focuses. So we built Entrepreneurista into be a full media company and a membership community, the Entrepreneurista League, which you are part of it, as you shared, you're one of our founding members of the community. And we wanted to have a platform and community that would really have all of the best resources, advice, connection, community, everything that Courtney and I wish we had from day one when we first started our agency business, Socialfly. So I know that was a long answer to your question, <laughs> but wanted to provide your listeners with the full background and, and context of really how it came to be. And it's really out of our mission and passion for helping as many women founders and leaders as possible. It's what we love doing. And you know, we can all do so much more together. I'm honestly so honored to be a part of this community. When I first launched my company, I was terrified. I'm still terrified, but having your your league and your community really helped me to overcome a lot of my fears to keep pushing through because I was alone. I didn't have any idea of what I was doing. And to have a community of others who knew and, you know, could help me guide me on this journey has been life changing. So mm. thank you all. And thank you both for what you guys do because it's really, it's really powerful. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank and you. we're so happy to be able to have created this so we can help founders like you and so many women who feel like the exact same way you do It is so scary and challenging and hard running a business. And you need to be able to have a community and support and other people that you can go to to ask questions when you're not sure about something or you want that extra support. And we can definitely all do more together. <laughs> yes. I've met so many amazing friends from the, of the league and in the community. So I wonder to know from you, can you highlight a story or experience that deeply resonated with you and showcases the impact your community is making? Well, Corlin, I would say your story and what you're sharing <laughs> right now, like you are the reason why we started this community because we see the impact that just having the connection and the support can have. And, you know, I can share with you, I get messages, emails, DMs, messages in the community platform from our members literally every single day, just sharing the impact that the community is making not only like in their business, but in their life too. You know, members are meeting some of their, you know, best friends in life and in business from, from being in the community. And when we see, you know, the results we see from our members, you know, span everything from getting access to, you know, being able to raise capital for their business. I made an intro to someone very early on when we first started Entrepreneurista that led to a million dollar investment in her series A. I see members that are collaborating and doing brand partnerships together, developing products together, getting featured in the press. I mean, everything that's happening every day, I just like cry happy tears just seeing all of this happening because it's just so powerful when everyone can come together and, and collaborate. Definitely. I have been on so many of my fellow Entrepreneurial League's podcasts and, and I've also had them on my show. So it's been really cool to have had those connections. I've also gotten a lot of press from um, being in the league. So that was really fun. It's still been really cool. Um, so I'm really just, I really think that you're doing such great things and it's just so fun to be a part of this. Okay. So as co-authors of Like, Love, Follow, what inspired you to share your insights in a book and how has this experience influenced your role as entrepreneurs and thought leaders? I love this question because uh, we wrote the book so long ago. <clears throat> And we always say we're going to write another book, uh, but it and it will happen, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. But when we 2024, to... Courtney, 2024. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we always say this is the year Every we're going to write our, our next book. Uh, but I actually learned so much through the process of writing the book. And one of the things that uh, 
really set me and Stephanie up for success was we've always practiced what we preached and just dove right into uh, different types of marketing initiatives. You know, we really got ourselves out there by doing a lot of marketing for ourselves, which you don't typically see a lot of agencies do. A lot of times they're focusing on um, their clients, which of course we did, but we always made sure that our own marketing was a priority, uh, which really helped us in the long run. Uh, So when we decided to write the book, uh, we wrote the book for several reasons. Uh, This one, I think when we made the decision, it was in 2014, and then we finally got the book out in 2015. So we decided to self-publish because that was the fastest way for us to get a book. It took us about a year to write it, and then we worked with a uh, self-publishing company to to get it out and had a big launch party in 2018. 15. I remember that was really fun. Uh, But the main reason for writing the book was we were young. You know, one of the things that surprised people when we went to meetings with them in the early days was like, they were like, wow, you're so young. And, you know, being social media marketers, you know, it made sense that we were young because we grew up with social media. Um, But people were Uh, really taken aback when we showed up to meetings. They're like, wow, you're so young to be running your own company. So the main reason for writing the book was credibility to have that as a leave behind in our new business meeting so that when we showed up, we could say we wrote the book on social media. uh, We left something behind so that clients could remember us. And also it made us an authority in social media because it was a book on social media. So we could literally say, we wrote the book on social media or we wrote a book about social media. And and it really helped us. I will say, you know, we got to work and we still work with some of the largest brands in the world. And doing things like that really helped us with our credibility in the early days as really young entrepreneurs. That's amazing. Um, I, I also want to say that this isn't related to what you just said, but um, Courtney, you and I have our names are really similar, and I, I'm always I being called Courtney. <laughs> I'm always being called Courtney every single day, which is really drives me insane. But I also realized that recently that we have the our birthdays are also a day apart, which is also really funny. I'm not sure if you're the 14th or the 12th of October. But I'm the 13th. I'm the 12th. Okay, so you're a Libra too. Oh, yeah. It's so funny. I always meet people that are born around my birthday. So I tend to attract a lot of Libras in my life. Um, So that's that's so funny. What a funny coincidence. (laughs) All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So finding the right partner (laughs) can be tough. How has being co-founders, co-hosts, and co-authors influence your perspectives on collaboration and leadership within your own entrepreneurial journey? And what effect has it had on your personal friendship? I would say that Courtney and I got so lucky meeting each other and just being two people that are so aligned with our business values and the motivation that we both have. Like we got very lucky because we were friends first before we started our business. And we also got lucky in a sense that we just so happened to have opposite skill sets, which is, I would say, very very important and impactful in a business partnership. And like, we didn't realize and know a lot of these things right away. Like we figured them out over the years. And we have also been just very lucky in the sense that our business partnership has worked out very well and lasted. I've lost track of time, 12 plus years now, whatever year in 2023, almost 13 years. And you don't hear it that often. And a lot of times people will ask us like, how do you make your business partnership work, your friends, your business partners. Like I actually had a call with an entrepreneur the other day, and she was telling me about a business that she had started with a different business partner. She's like, it didn't work out. And a lot of times we hear, we hear this a lot. And I think it has worked for Courtney and myself being friends and business partners, because we have immense trust in each other. I know that no matter what happens, like Courtney would never, ever do anything that we should not be doing in our business. Like we can trust each other with absolutely everything. And we're not going to judge each other either. Like if we make a mistake and something happens, like it happens, it's okay. And we figure out like how to problem solve and get to the next thing. And we have grown up so much together, like in business <laughs> and in life. I mean, when we started the business, we were both in our early and mid twenties. And now I'm going to be 40 
next year, <laughs> which is I'm like, how is that possible? Um, so we've been through so much together and because we have that level of trust and the same vision and motivation building these businesses, it's just been just a, a great relationship. Oh, and we had a business coach that we worked with who was basically like our what you, like our business therapist who really helped us over the years because we were so young and didn't know a lot of these things. This has all come with uh, experience and uh, an age. <laughs> That's incredible. I know how rare it is to have a partner partner that you know you can go through all of this with because it's not easy for me. I personally. I learned that I can't do it. At least right now, I can't have a partner on because I am not good at delegating. I'm not good at letting go of the load. For one thing, I know that for a fact that I have a hard time with control. And also my vision is so unique that I hard for me to explain it to someone else to have them on, on board with me. You're both nodding your heads. I guess I understand. <laughs> I love that. So it's really, and then also I have this, um, I have, I had before a co-host for the podcast, but that currently right now it's not happening because she has other things to do but to to have my um my fear of speaking and my fear of having this done alone and to overcome it and having you know the show still running has been really scary but I'm still doing it and I know that I can do it on my own even though I don't I don't I don't think that I need a partner on for things but I do actually want a partner one day mm-hmm. again because it is a lot and I'm tired <laughs> just to say that <laughs> Well, you're doing it and congrats on, yes. you know, getting through that fear and so much of just life and business in general is facing that fear. And even if things seem really hard, just doing it anyways, because once you get through it and, and practicing it, it does get easier. And I still remember like when Courtney and I recorded our some of our very first episodes of our podcast, and we used to record in studio prior to the pandemic, I remember like just being so nervous to record a podcast and, you know, like, what was it going to be like? And then once you, you know, start doing it, it just then becomes a lot easier once you practice things. So. Okay. So you have both received incredible accolades throughout your career. And have also created the Entrepreneurs to the 100 Awards, which I actually applied to <laughs> this year and last year. So we'll see what happens this year um, to celebrate female founders all over the world, which is really inspiring. How do you personally define success and how has this definition evolved throughout your entrepreneurial career? Yes, uh, I, I also really love this question uh, and how I define success personally has is constantly evolving. I think when Stephanie and I first started Social Fly, for me personally, success was having a career in social media because I didn't have a background in marketing. My background was finance. So I remember I was trying to to get a job in social media, but it would have been uh would have been hard to get one without that experience. So I basically created my own job and thankfully it worked out. So in the early days, that was what success was. Then as you're running a business and hiring people, um, you know, you start to define success a little bit differently and success then becomes hitting your revenue goals and your profit goals. Uh, but now, you know, 12 years later, for me, what success is, is having the opportunity to wake up every morning and look forward to what you're doing and knowing that you can make a, a big impact on, you know, your community and the people that you get to work with and the clients that you get to serve. Uh, and then, um, you know, as I look to the future, I would love, you know, success for me one day would be, you know, having a more flexible schedule and having more freedom of time. Um, but right now I I love what I do and I feel very successful because I get the opportunity to, to help so many people each day. Amazing. Okay. The Entrepreneurs of Podcast, Sars and Stilettos has shared many stories. Can you recall an interview that left a lasting impression on both a personal and professional level? And why did it resonate with you? Oh my gosh. I feel like every time I get off the podcast, I'm like, oh my God, this is the best uh, podcast ever. (laughs) And we've had so many incredible guests. How many guests have we have? Like over 300 at this point? Around 260, I think. Yeah. Yeah. there are two per- two moments in particular that really come to mind with this question, but there have been, you know, literally hundreds of moments that I could probably rattle off. 
Um, but before the pandemic, we used to record in person, which now looking back, I definitely miss those days. Uh, and we had the founders of Rodin and Fields on the podcast. And if you don't know them, they're I think they're billionaires or the company is definitely worth uh, at least a billion dollars. So they built a very, very successful business. And um, they just reminded me of me and Stephanie, you know, fast forward however many years. Um, and they were just, it was so great to get to talk to them, get to see that they still enjoyed working together, get to see their dynamic and their friendship and the things that they put in place in the early days of starting their business. And I'll, I'll always remember that experience and getting to meet them. Uh, and then we also got the opportunity to meet Suzanne Summers, who unfortunately recently passed away, but I'll never forget that experience either. She came with her husband. He even chimed in um, and she had so many incredible things to say uh, in that in that episode, which now that I'm talking about it, I want to re-listen to that episode because <laughs> it was so it was so good. Uh, so those are those are two. But again, there's hundreds of of episodes that I could just continue to rattle off here. But I know we don't have um, <laughs> two more hours. <laughs> Alrighty. So you both have a prominent public presence. How do you balance personal authenticity with the public facing image of an entrepreneur, especially in the age of social media? I love this question because I love talking about, you know, personal branding and being authentic and connecting with your community. So I'll share for myself personally, like with Instagram specifically, um, several years ago, I guess it's been like over five years ago now, I had started sharing my journey with infertility on my Instagram account. And for me, that going through infertility was one of the hardest things I've ever been through. And I feel like running a business prepared me for my journey with infertility, having to like manage so many different things at once. And then going through my infertility journey that prepared me for my very complicated pregnancy journey that I had. And I started sharing what I was going through on Instagram. And it was very hard for me at first because it was so painful and so personal. And what I learned from that is by sharing and opening up one, it actually like helped me. Like it like took a weight off of me because I felt like I was carrying so much inside that I at first couldn't share. And when I started sharing, I started being able to connect with others and especially other women who were going through similar things. Some of them really ended up helping me ultimately actually get pregnant and then stay pregnant as I went through this very complicated journey. And I was able to share like the reality of trying to still, you know, run a business with my business partner and go through all go through all of these challenging times. And I'm just, I always say like I'm just a regular I'm a regular person just like everyone else, you know. Just because Courtney and I are building these awesome businesses, we all we're all human. We all have challenges. We all have things that we're going through. And when we're able to share those, we're able to connect to other people and come together and help each other. So five years ago, when I started like being more personal on social media and sharing what I was actually going through. I was able to then build some of, you know, my closest, you know, friendship connections now to this day and incredible business connections too, by just being myself on social media. And I think we see now more than ever, you know, the importance for founders to building brands and building personal brands and being authentic and being human, because ultimately people really like to do business with people that they know, that they love, that they trust. You know, if you're launching a business, if service-based business or a product, and you've been connecting with people and sharing, you know, the process of building your business or what's going on in your personal life, when you share that you're launching something and something new is coming, people want to support you. They want to be your cheerleader. They want to be along for the ride. So by being able to, you know, bring your personal life and your business life together and working on building that personal brand, whatever feels authentic and, and right for you, I really encourage founders to, to do that. I would say that I love following your journey on Instagram, both of you, but with Stephanie, with seeing Molly, seeing, seeing your daughter, like just grow up, it's just so beautiful to see that and, and to feel like I'm part of your story because I learned from your story from, you know, following your Instagram and learning about your IVF journey and how 
how I can't imagine how hard it was, it was for you, but I can kind of un- understand it in a way because of how much you share online, which is really beautiful. Well, thank you. It's why I share it. I want to, you know, so many women helped me as I was sharing and going through what we were going through. And all I want to do is, you know, pay it forward and and help others that are going through it now, especially because it's so hard to navigate. I mean, I, you know, I would say every month I do get a few messages from people that are going through something right now. I had a, a mom reach out to me who um, had the same pregnancy, one of the same pregnancy complications that, that I did and, you know, shared the advice that I got that helped me get through it. And now her, her daughter was born 15 weeks premature and she's in the NICU right now. And I check in with her every few days and text her and, you know, check in to see how she's doing because it is so hard. And especially if you don't have your own, you know, community or family or support system, being able to talk to other people that have been through it is so helpful, whether it's in your personal life or in business, which is why we started our entrepreneurs community. Yes, absolutely. Um, I do want to ask you a question for both of you now, which is a bonus question. When was the last time that you both felt fearless? A time when you were afraid, but you did it anyway. And then how did it turn out? I'm going to start with Courtney. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. Huh? I re- there. I mean, I feel like I have a moment like this every single day where I'm overcoming some sort of fear and, and learning to push through it. And I would say it's something that now I'm more comfortable with, um, you know, having been an entrepreneur now for the past 12 years, I've, Actually, I think I shared this with someone the other day. If I'm not uncomfortable, I'm uncomfortable because I don't even know what I just feel like I'm not growing if I'm not constantly pushing myself and putting myself out out of my comfort zone. But most recently, the one I can think of is I recently went to a retreat in Costa Rica alone, which is something that I started doing, like doing these like personal development retreats in 2019. And there was a lot of there's always a lot of growth that comes that from that. Um, I, I love retreats. So, and getting to meet new people at these things. And I love, you know, the unknown of what's going to happen and who I'm going to meet when I'm there. So that's the kind of last one that immediately comes to mind, but there's, there's an element of that in my everyday life. I will tell you. <laughs> love it For me, I would say, and people don't necessarily believe this about me, but this is true. I am definitely like an introverted extrovert. So, and I think I've also got very, not I think, I know I have, and Courtney will tell you this. I've gotten very used to over the past few years, just being in my home office, doing as much as possible, meeting as many people as possible right here over Zoom and like not getting out there like in real life and, you know, going to events and doing all the things that Courtney and I used to do when we were, you know, running around New York City when we were when we were building Social Fly. So now for me, you know, it's become harder for me to like just go out and go to big events and and go places and get out because I've gotten so used to this. And my life is a little different now. Of course, having a little one, everything is just a little more um, complicated with, with schedules. And I I just love being home and I love being home with my daughter and I love working and being behind the computer. So I do have to like challenge myself to be like, okay, I am going to go to this event or I'm going to go get out and and do this because it has, it has gotten hard for me. But then when I do it every time I'm like, oh, that was awesome. That was the best. So I just have to remind myself. And I tell Courtney, I was like, just remind me to, to just do it, just get out and do it. <laughs> I'm also I'm really used to being home now that it's hard for me to go outside and be around others because I think my energy has, has changed a lot since I've gotten older, but also like a lot of health issues have happened too. But to be around crowds now, I can feel I'm an impasse. I can feel everyone's energy and it drains me at times. So I definitely have that fear of like being around crowds too. But I will say with Courtney, I actually did actually do also love um, retreats as well. And I went on two retreats alone. I went to Nicaragua and I went to Mexico uh, in 2019 and 2020 before the world shut down. And it was definitely a, for me, a fearless, a fearless moment when I was very scared to be the only one out there, you know, going alone without my friend, just being with me by the strangers, but it was a really good experience. I'm really proud of that too. So I really can uh, understand why you also love going on these retreats too. 
And we're at Cortland, we're planning an amazing entrepreneurista retreat for May of 2024. And it's not going to be a small retreat. It's going to be a big retreat. We're going to have a, a couple hundred entrepreneurs there, but our whole theme this year is wealth and wellness for founders. And we want to bring everyone together to like, still have that element of, you know, the retreat in the sense that there's going to be, you know, spa treatments and wellness activities and activations, but we're also going to come together and, you know, learn from some of of the the best speakers and the experiences that we're putting together like how can we all make more money invest in ourselves invest in each other and like i said before just do so much more together so we're so excited for the entrepreneurs to retreat and hope you get to come too hope i can too i'm excited all right so as trailblazers in the industry what advice would you give to women who are considering launching their own businesses especially those in sectors dominated by traditionally male leadership my advice that I share all the time is to just start. Nothing is going to be perfect ever. So if you wait for things to be perfect, you're going to be waiting a long time. So just jump in, just start. And, you know, the best piece of advice we were ever given when we had just started social fly was to join a community. And it was the best advice that we ever got from someone because that is how we, you know, built our network and relationships and got lots of our first clients as well. And why we ultimately then created our entrepreneurship community so we could bring everyone together. So just start and join a community. And Courtney, do you, do you want to add anything to that? I, I agree with, with Stephanie, um, you know, just start. And, and I think a lot of women have imposter syndrome and, you know, it just speaks to what we spoke about earlier is, you know, feel the fear and, and do it anyway. Um, you know, men tend to come across as like overly confident, are confident even in situations where they may not have all of the facts and women are, are the opposite. So my advice would be to really work on building your self-confidence. And even if you find yourself feeling not so confident in a social setting, fake it, fake it, act, work, your, work through it and build that muscle because confidence will really help you in the long run. That was an amazing way to end the show. So lastly, how can our audience find you? Of course. So you can find uh, Entreprenista at entreprenista.com and to join our community is entreprenista.com forward slash join. And you can find us at socialfly, socialflyny.com. And on Instagram, we're at entreprenistas with an S at the end and at socialfly. And you can also reach out to either of us personally on Instagram as well or LinkedIn. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. And I, I'm happy I was honored to have the time to talk to you both because I think I've never had a time to talk to you both in your office hours. So I'm glad I got to have this moment with both of you today. Thank you for being here on the show with me. Thank you, Cortland. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and that is a wrap. Fearless Narratives airs every Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. Thank you for joining us today. You have been an amazing audience and we really love your support. So we also would love for you to give us a nice five-star review. And until next time, stay fearless. <laughs>